Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Wednesday, May 25th, 2011. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX over Caesar AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Uh, on this day in 1979, an American Airlines DC-10 crashed shortly after takeoff from Chicago O'Hare Airport, killing all 271 people on board. It was subsequently determined that a uh, cracked pylon attaching the wing had caused the wing to fall off. All DC-10s throughout the world were grounded then for a period of time as they were checked. In the United States, there's big news. A congressional uh, election last night held uh, because of the uh, resignation of a member uh, went to the Democrats. That would not normally be a bulletin. However, it was a heavily Republican district. Uh, John McCain beat President Obama in the last presidential election there by getting 70 percent of the vote. And the Democrats won the race, mainly on the Medicare issue. The Republicans are advocating ending Medicare. It was a, uh, a runaway romp. Meanwhile, Christine Lagarde, the French finance minister, seems to be on track to become the new IMF head. We'll go to our main news. Modeling companies are coming in now with the estimates of the insured losses from the Joplin tornado. Equicat is saying that they'll be in a range of between $1 billion to $3 billion. Uh, the tornadoes killed at least 121 people in Joplin, the highest toll from a single U.S. cyclone in 58 years. It demolished more than 2,000 buildings. Up to 10,000 buildings were damaged. The storm was reportedly a rare multi-vortex tornado with two or more intense centers of rotation moving around a larger central funnel. The storm was also raised to an EF5 category, which meant it has winds of at least 212 miles per hour. Meanwhile, last night in the United States, if you were watching TV, the networks and the cable networks were breaking in with live coverage from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Violent storms with winds of more than 150 miles per hour slammed into the state last night, killing at least 13 people across three states. The high-powered storms arrived last night and early this morning killed at least eight people in Oklahoma, two in Kansas, and three more in Arkansas. All this activity now in the first quarter puts uh, the cost of tornado activity um, for the uh, past week at three billion, and for the past two months in the U.S. alone at more than eight billion. Now you'll recall here last week Henry Keeling mentioned that uh, there's still ten billion dollars of overcapacity in the global reinsurance market that's uh, beginning to look a little less, uh, uh, little less daunting. And there are only 10 days to go until the official beginning of the 2011 hurricane season. Uh, Aon Benfield has already predicted that cat losses from April storms in the U.S. could reach more than $4 billion. AIR said that the uh, final week of the storms alone will cost the industry more than $5.5 billion. So this could be a, a series of uh, costly events that are going to really add up. Well, yesterday, uh, the uh, U.S. Treasury and AIG completed the first stage of the uh, revised IPO for AIG with the sale of about $8.7 billion in shares. Managed to produce a small profit for American taxpayers. The price per share went off at $29. Still a little bit at the lower end of the expected pricing range, but it was $0.28 cents above the U.S. government's break-even point. AIG sold $100 million of the shares on offer. The Treasury sold 200 million shares. The government has reduced its stake now to about 74 percent in the company. Uh, Nick Predijon is back. He's been confirmed as chairman of Brit Insurance. This is after the company's annual general meeting. At the same time, Brit's conversion into a private company was officially approved. Uh, former Paris Re CEO Hans uh, Peter Gerhardt was voted onto the board. Dane Dote, Peter Hazel, and William Stevens were all reappointed. Um, it marks the final step in Brit's takeover by Netherlands-based vehicle Achilles. The stock market, dare I say, is actually up about 25 points. Let's hope it stays that way. We'll go to a word from our sponsors.
Well, this is an interesting story. Um, think back to 2008 when the price of oil skyrocketed back then. I know it's hard to remember because oil seems to go up and down. But there were a lot of suspicions that traders had manipulated the market. Um, the Congress got involved. They ended up having uh, hearings. Regulatory investigations began. But there was no solid evidence uh, regarding the record, then record run up in gasoline prices. Yesterday, though, the U.S. government filed a civil lawsuit against two traders, one in Australia and California, and three American and international firms. The charges say that in early 2008, they tried to hoard nearly two-thirds of the available supply of a crucial American market for crude oil, then abruptly dumped it and improperly pocketed $50 million. The regulators from the Commodities Future Trading Commission, the CFTC, would not say whether they were conducting any other investigations into oil speculation, but President Obama has asked Attorney General Eric Holder just recently to look into fraud in oil and gas markets. In the case filed yesterday, the two defendants and the three small companies responded telling regulators that they denied that they manipulated the market. If the government could prove the claims, the defendants may have to give up $50 million in profits and pay a penalty of $150 million. Here's an interesting article that was on the front page of today's Insurance Day, written by our friend Richard Banks, who's the editor of that august publication. Solvency II preparations must not be allowed to divert insurers and regulators' attention from carrying out their real jobs. This comes from Matthew Elderfield. He's the deputy governor of the Central Bank of Ireland. He's one of Europe's most, financial, most important financial supervisors. Elderfield said, don't take your eye off the ball. He said, regulators need to take a robust approach to monitoring insurers' underwriting discipline in the face of still soft pricing conditions. And he suggested that the banking crisis was exacerbated because bankers were distracted by preparing for Basel II. Basel II was the banking regulatory schema, uh, very similar to Solvency II. Elderfield said that the situation must not be allowed to repeat itself with Solvency II. He said, people talk about lessons for insurance from the banking crisis. He said, but in hindsight, the problem with the Basel implementation was that you had the financial regulator and the banks focused on the regulation while there was this credit issue bubbling underneath. He went on to say they felt they could dovetail it into the Basel implementation that it would take care of itself. In the meantime, the problem was getting worse and worse, and the crisis broke before Basel could come into implementation. He said, we can't divert everything into Solvency II. We still have to do the day job as an industry, i.e. insurance, and be alive to any risks that are bubbling up while we progress the director. That's really quite something. Um, I've never heard the tie-in before to perhaps, perhaps being uh, connected to the implementation of Basel for the banking crisis and to have one of Europe's top regulators specifically warn, uh, keep your eye on the ball and don't devote all of your resources to Solvency II and pay attention to minding the store is definitely worth the front page article. Our congratulations to Mr. Banks. Well, the people who run Aon are pretty smart cookies. They announced today the pricing of $500 million of senior unsecured notes. The notes are going to mature in uh, 2016. They bear a fixed interest rate, get this, of 3.125%. That's amazing. Uh, but in this day and age, that's a pretty good price, actually. Proceeds from the offering are going to be used for the partial repayment of Aon's $1 billion three-year term credit agreement. Um, that has a uh, variable annual rate of uh, LIBOR uh, plus 250 basis points. It's currently going at 2.71 percent. So do the math here. Initially, they're coming out of the gate and the difference is between 2.71 percent and 3.12 percent. So they're paying off the 2.7 percent with 3.12 percent money. Now that means that somebody at Aon thinks the interest rate is going to rise. And that means that somebody at Aon is aware that inflation is rising. And that means that somebody has figured out that the central bank's response is undoubtedly going to be to raise interest rates. So Aon is acting ahead of the game. Smart cookies, like I said. Meanwhile, Endurance Specialty Holdings has become the second Bermudian to raise funds post the Japanese quake. They've come out with a $230 million issue of preference shares. Um, 
Endurance has priced its 7.5% Series B non-cumulative preferred issue with a liquidity preference of $25 a share. That's a big difference, 7.5%. Well, sometimes you don't think you're going to ever uh, report a story. Let's pull this guy up. Uh, this is a dinosaur. Don't worry, it's animated. It's a dinosaur at the Kings Island Amusement Park in Ohio. Um, the amusement park is building something called an animatronic uh, lineup of dinosaurs and it's uh, offering a roller coasters and thrill rides this summer. The problem is that this particular dinosaur in the dinosaur exhibit at Kings Island caught fire last night. It's not expected to delay the planned grand opening on Thursday of Dinosaurs Alive, however. Uh, this was a life-size dinosaur, a life-size Tyrannosaurus rex. Caught fire shortly after the park closed at 8 p.m. last night, but the uh, park fire department quickly extinguished the blaze. Park officials said there were no injuries. There's also not going to be any danger of any other burning dinosaurs for visitors when the exhibit opens on Thursday. The Dinosaur Alive exhibit is expected to be a long-term project for the Cedar Fair Entertainment Company, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol FUN. It's going to add to it from season to season with more dinosaurs. I'll tell you, I, I, I should have checked to see if there was a YouTube video of the burning dinosaur. I'm sure there was. Stock market is still up. I'm not going to say anything else. We'll jinx it. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.